All right. All right, we're going to get started. Uh, I apologize, we are missing somebody, but uh, they'll be right in. This, <clears throat> this is a regular scheduled board meeting for Edgewood City Schools. Uh, Mrs. Bowers, would you call a roll, please? Mr. Gabbard? Here. Mr. Pressler? Here. Mr. Measureschmidt? Here. Mr. York? Here. Mrs. Ashcraft is absent today? Yes. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. Is Pastor Arp here? Thank you. Podium right here. Perfect. Thank you very much. There you go. In James 1 5, it tells us that if any man needs wisdom, we just have to ask God. And that's my prayer for tonight that we all have wisdom throughout this whole meeting. And let, let's pray for that. God, thank you for this opportunity to come together and just deliberate and speak and, and figure out what is best for our schools. God, give us wisdom in every decision and give each board member wisdom in all of their decisions, God, and just blanket this room in your presence and let us do this respectfully and with all glory to you, God, and wisdom from you. In your mighty name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do I want to go ahead and say if they want to speak, they need to come sign Yes. Up. Well, I think that's after presentation. I'm, we're going to do our okay. fifth grade first. Mr. York is now present. Thank you, Pastor Art. Um, now I'm going to look for a motion for the approval of the agenda as presented. So moved. Mr. Messerschmidt, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Pressler. Mrs. Bowers, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Measureschmidt? Yes. Mr. Pressler? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. York? Yes. Motion carries 4 0. Next, we have presentations. We do, Mr. President. We're so excited to have our fifth grade students from Edgewood Intermediate. Uh, building this evening, and they're going to sing some Christmas holiday tunes. So we're going to turn it over to our music teacher and our students. We can't wait. They're going to stay there. Do I think we can? Do you want to sit down? I think we're just as good here. Are th where are they going? They're going to sit down here. Yeah. That we set up too, but they prefer this.
Thank you very much, fifth graders. My goodness, I have to tell you, several of us have been attending a few musical programs over the last two weeks. And I have to tell you, our feeder program, now I know why the Coraliers are as good as they are. It starts at such a young age. Thank you very much to our staff and to our students. We hope you have a great evening. We appreciate you joining us. While the fifth, while the fifth graders are uh, heading out here, we do have a pub public participation form up here. Would anybody like to speak this evening? Would you please come up and sign this? We have Courtney Hicks that's going to speak tonight. Please state your name and your address. And uh, just a reminder, you've got three minutes. And I can't even see you. There you go. <laughs> my name is Courtney Hicks. My address is 211 West Arlington Drive here in Trenton. Um, what else did you say? I forgot three minutes. Uh, I, my, I basically. That microphone. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. There we go. Thank you. Do I need to repeat everything? No. Okay, um, my main concern is with this bullying stuff. Um, I personally have a child, actually multiple children in the school district. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but my oldest one goes to the high school and she was physically assaulted on Friday, or I'm sorry, Thursday. I have went to the school, three boys hit my daughter and the school was not wanting to do anything. We need to address these situations and make stronger punishments because if it's, if it's doing this now, what's gonna happen when they get a, a grown men? Did your daughter hit the school? Yes, and it was caught on camera. And what time of day was that? 12.30 p.m. on Thursday. On Thursday. Thank you. Do what? Oh yeah, and she did have a concussion. I had to take her to the hospital. She's fine. She's actually sitting over there, not really, she's covering herself, but she is here, and we need to have stricter policies on this, because it's supposed to be no tolerance, but when you don't, when you give warnings to two of the boys and only give a one-day suspension, that's not suitable. Not at all. My, my kids don't need that, and nobody needs that. So, so let me understand this. This happened at school at 12.30. One of these three boys have been suspended? For a day. Okay. They won't tell, the school won't physically tell me, but my daughter has found out. Because, you know, kids talk. Is your daughter feeling safe at school now that they're She back? doesn't feel safe. She hasn't felt safe since we came here in 2018. We left for a year and came back. Sixth grade, she was a physical, I think it was sixth grade. Um, she was physically assaulted by a girl. I had to press charges and have a stay away order. The middle school could not protect her then. And now she's at the high school having these problems. Are these the same kids from middle this school? This is not the, the, not the same. This was a female that assaulted her um, in, in middle school. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna follow up with you tomorrow okay. on this, okay? Okay. Thank you, I appreciate Thank you. you bringing this to our attention and you're gonna hear me talk a little bit tonight about harsher punishments. Thank you. 
Next we have treasurer items. Mrs. Bowers, would you like to start, please? Uh, yes, first I would like to ask for a motion to approve the board minutes. Um, and I'm blocking A and B. It's for the uh, Records Commission meeting as well as the regular board meeting minutes from November the 27th. I'm looking for a motion to approve the board minutes for this uh, Records Commission meeting and also the regular scheduled board meeting on November 27th. So moved. Mr. Messerschmidt, do I have a second? Mr. York, Mrs. Bowers, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Messerschmidt? Yes. Mr. York? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Pressler? Yes. Motion carries 4 0. Next, I would like to ask for a motion to approve the financial reports as presented. I'm looking for a motion to approve the financial reports as presented. So Mr. York, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Messerschmidt? Any discussion? Mrs. Bowers, would you call the roll, please? Mr. York? Yes. Mr. Measurschmidt? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Pressler? Yes. Motion carries 4-0. Uh, next, I would like to block items, <clears throat> excuse me, D, E, F, and G. These are all donations. Uh, Two are for lunch charges, and the other are for athletic participation. I'm going to look for a motion to approve the four donations as presented. So moved. Mr. Messerschmidt, do I have a second? Second. Mr. York. Mrs. Bowers, do you call the roll, please? Mr. Messerschmidt? Yes. Mr. York? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Pressler? Yes. Motion carries 4 0. Uh, the next agenda item is the Rumpke Agreement. I'm looking for a motion to approve the Rumpke agreement. So moved. Mr. Messerschmidt, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Pressler. Mrs. Bowers, do you call the roll, please? Mr. Messerschmidt. What was the question? <laughs> Mr. Messerschmidt. <laughs> We're going to call the roll. Oh, yes. Tom was talking. I apologize. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mr. Pressler? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. York? Yes. Motion carries 4 0. Next agenda item, I'd like to ask for a motion to approve the frontline renewal. I'm looking for a motion to approve the frontline renewal. So moved. Mr. Messerschmidt, do I have a second? Second. Mr. York? Any discussion? What? I know this is software. What exactly is this used for? Uh, applicant tracking. So um, people who apply in the school. Um, Mrs. Beckett can probably speak further to this. She uses it. It's just for people who apply for jobs and things. In it's the also school. tracking of our attendance for staff requests. It's tracking of our licensure program. Okay. That, We've that done it for years. Answers my question. Thank you. Mrs. Bowers, would you call the roll, please? Uh, Mr. Measurschmidt? Yes. Mr. York? Yep. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. And Mr. Pressler? Yes. Motion carries 4 0. Uh, next agenda item I would like to block um, the Protection Plus window tent as well as the Cincinnati alarm systems quote. We're going to look for a motion to approve the protection window tinting and the Cincinnati alarm systems. So moved. Mr. Pressler, do I have a second? I second. Mr. Messerschmidt. Uh, I take it this is from our uh, money that... OFCC safety safety grant, safety grant. Funds? yes. Okay. Any more discussion? This is the, the same film that we did on all the other windows, no you, difference? Correct. Okay. So will that, does that get all of our windows, all of our doors and windows? Do you remember we did um, front doors and then we asked for the rest of the cafeteria? So this is the extension of that second phase. Okay. Mm -hmm. any, any idea just roughly how much it's going to cost to do everything that we want to do? I think that's the this, it, it doesn't get like the upstairs the windows. It's the bottom glass of the high school. Covers mm -hmm. everything ground level. It finishes everything. On the ground level. Okay. All right, Which is probably all we want to do, I would think. But you never know. Any more discussion? Yes, sir. 
Mrs. Bowers, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Pressler? Yes. Mr. Measureschmidt? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. York? Yes. Motion carries 4-0. Uh, next, I would like to ask for a nomination for President Pro Temp for the organizational meeting. I nominate Gary Gabbard. Second. This is, okay, this is just to run the meeting in January, yeah. yes. Mrs. Bowers, did you call the roll, please? Mr. Pressler? Yes. Mr. York? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. And Mr. Measurement? Yes. Motion carries 4-0. Next agenda well, item, we, we would like- Real quick, are we gonna put any agenda items on the organizational committee? And yes us? yes yes we have a work session that evening we talked about if you guys are still in agreement uh, since we have a new board member joining us just some um, regulations on on rules on parliament on how we make decisions together and so there'll be that item and then i don't think we have any like personnel or anything like that no personnel but i have a lot of things um, that have to be done at the beginning of the year so it'll be organization as as required by Ohio law within the first 15 days of the month. And then we're gonna do a work session just to get to know a new member leaving, and a, a, an older <laughs> member leaving, a new one coming in on just how we're gonna to operate together. Are we gonna to vote on anything? Is there anything? Yes, there? absolutely. Okay. So what I have out there That's right why the pro tem is being elected tonight. Okay. Uh, what I have out there right now is election for the board president, vice president, um, there will be oaths that go along with both of those. I have um, several annual items, um, and this is authorizing me to pay bills, invoices, things like that. There's a whole list. I can send that to you after the meeting tonight just so you can look ahead. But I, I was um, just trying to get an idea of how, how long the meeting was going to last, if it was going to be an actual meeting or if it was just the – so, or, and we're still having the – I'd give an hour and a half at least to two hours. The, the regularly scheduled January Yes, meeting. yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Gary. <laughs> hey, you're the board. If you don't want or if you don't want the work session, we can take that out. No, I think it's fine. So, the motion is to set the date for the organizational meeting, and we are recommending that, recommending that we do that on January the eighth. Um, by Ohio Revised Code, we only have 15 days. It has to occur in those first 15 days. The first is a holiday, so we were thinking the eighth, the next Monday. Is everybody good with that? Yes, sir. Yep. I'm going to look for a motion to set a date. Do we need to do a motion for this? Yes. Uh, set the date of January the 8th, 2024. That's also the first day of school, too, right? Back for students, not for staff. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll so move. Mr. Pressler, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Messerschmidt. Mrs. Bowers, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Pressler? Yes. Mr. Measureschmidt? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. York? Yes. Motion carries 4-0. Uh, the next agenda item, we need to appoint an associate school board member to serve um, as the Butler Tech Career Development Schools. And that's something uh, you can also do at the organizational meeting if you would choose, if you want to. I believe we want to table this to our organizational meeting. Okay. Till we have maybe some time to discuss amongst us. Do we need a motion to table it or? Do we? Just table. Just going to table it. Okay. Um, next is just informational items from the treasurer. Um, I've shared out there, if you've looked at it, we had some discussion last month about E-rate. Um, and I just put it out there so that you can see what we have actually saved. Um, I'm going to open mine up real fast just so I can take a look at that with you. Um, so this is over a three-year span here, and that's all I went back and pulled. Um, and you can see we've had significant savings with them. Um, they've paid 244000 
um, and we paid 163. This is for all of our internet access and all of that. Um, like I was saying last month, we do anticipate even greater savings moving forward because our free and reduced lunch count um, has gone high enough now that we'll qualify for 80% savings. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, last thing is um, I just wanted to say to Mr. York um, that we appreciate your service here. Um, I think back um, to my mom talking about you, and you know she worked here 31 years and has been retired for quite some time, but went through some very trying times in her life. And I heard Miss Murray say that you were a good man, and my mom would reiterate that exact same statement. Um, just been there for my family throughout the years. And I just want to thank you for the so many years of service that you put in. Thanks. Thank you, Dad. Your mom's a special lady. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mrs. Bowers. Next, we have superintendent items. Mrs. Spivey, would you like yes, to start? Yes, I would. Mr. President, members of the board, I'd like to propose we group items 6A and B. Both are field trips. One is a series of day trips for our positive behavior support program, rewarding students from the um, going to the middle school from the primary building. So basically, when they are on track, they meet their behavior goals, they get rewarded. So they're going to go to the middle school. So that's what that's about. And there's a series of four dates on there. And then we have an overnight with FFA for a conference. And it's on leadership, how to increase leadership skills, communication, and um, certainly support our FFA program and what they teach our students. So looking for a motion to approve those two field trips. I'm going to look for a motion to approve a and B, both field trips. So moved. I'm sorry. Mr. Mr. Messerschmidt, do I have a second? Yes, yeah, second. Mr. Pressler. Uh, Mrs. Bowers, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Messerschmidt? Yes. Mr. Pressler? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. York? Yes. Motion carries 4 0. The next item is certainly a proposal for board meeting dates moving forward starting January 8th. That is something we usually do at the organizational meeting. I don't know if you want to just review it, table it, or actually approve it tonight. But I wanted to propose the dates. They're all aligned with our Monday evening, uh, with the exception of some holidays that it may conflict with. I, I would like to table it until maybe the organizational meeting in hopes that we have us all there. Uh, I agree. Are you good with that? Yeah. Okay. okay, well, we'll table that. Absolutely. We will move that to the following uh, meeting on January 8th. Uh, item D, I don't, basically it's for discussion, but you've heard me say in my weekly update as well as in a prior meeting that the Butler County Sheriff is proposing that the school resource officers wear body cams. Our attorneys are asking that um, we be cautious of the body cams just because they're not sure where that content goes. And of course, attorneys always err on the side of caution. Um, I've learned since then that really the sheriff doesn't need the MOU, but I wanted to bring this forward so we could have conversation and an understanding of, of where this is going. Any questions about it? I've been told no. that the body cams would only be um, videoing upon an occurrence with an adult and not students. That came later. I'm hearing someone in the audience. Is that your understanding? Um, first, let's, oh. let's get a let's get a motion to mm -hmm. talk this out. All right. Let me get a motion for the body worn cameras. Mr. Prester, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Master Schmidt. Discussion. Um, Obviously, we can't have our students on camera. Makes me a little cautious. However, we have cameras in the building that yeah, we certainly we can pull up. We but we control going. where the content goes, correct. And the Butler County is requesting this, right? They're one they one. are, but we've also been told it doesn't matter if we signed it or not, they're doing it. Well, I, I honestly don't. I mean, I don't know what the big issue is with it. So what is the discussion that they're going to do it anyway? I just want you to be aware of it and so discuss if you have any concerns awareness. that I can pass on or you don't. I mean, we so control, we control if we want SROs in the building. 
Sheriff controls, you know, obviously their rules and regulations. They, they are putting cameras on them. Attorneys tend to be cautious. They're just saying, be careful. Sometimes the content can get sold and you don't know where that's going and we have minors on there. I'm hearing that that's not the case. I'm just sharing with you the pros and cons and to have a discussion and be fully aware and transparent. Well, that would only become available to the public if there was some sort of charges or some sort of legal battle. Correct, right? correct. So, I mean, and then in that case, the, the minors would be blurred anyways, I'd, I'd assume. And it would just be, you know, it'd be used for court TV. That's what our attorneys are saying. Be careful, you don't know where it goes next. You know, they're gonna yeah. sell it to. Well, I'd imagine there's some liability for the sheriff too, right? If, I mean, he has to understand the sensitivity of video. I mean, I, I don't know, I think we either, we have to have some trust in the process, right? And think that he's gonna follow mm -hmm. applicable mm -hmm. laws. So, I, I mean, I personally don't have a problem with it. And it doesn't really sound like if I did, we could change it anyway, so. The, the Other than hire different school resource officers. Most, most events that happen in a hallway in a, in a school are videoed by cell phones and posted on. 100%, Mr. York, yep. Seconds of it happening. Yes. And you would think that the sheriff's office being professional would use them. Accordingly. Them according to right. what their purpose is. It wasn't that long ago we had video that the sheriff released that was taken from one of our buses that actually mm -hmm. helped us helped mm -hmm. us and showed mm -hmm. the situation that was on the bus. Yes, so, he, yes. God forbid we ever have something real serious happen in one of these buildings that that could be mm -hmm. valuable. So I, I mean I don't know why we would be You'd upset have a by concern. it, but okay. the, like I said, it doesn't sound like we could stop it anyway. Would you like for us to vote on that? No, it's just really an open okay. discussion on record. I think we're good. Okay, next item, just informational items, and this won't take long at all. First thing is that you're aware we had a community focus group uh, last Monday. It was very eye-opening, certainly informative, and um, the following, or within that week, I followed up with many of the families that spoke. I've also followed up with the Ohio School Safety Council, um, met with the representative and, and looked at our policies. He thought we had some pretty strong policies, um, but thought we could sure up some language in a few of them just to make sure they're, they're more consistent, but nothing big there. Uh, he agreed that we certainly need to do additional professional development and that doesn't mean that our staff isn't doing anything it just means we need to be more consistent and i want to give you some examples i'm hearing for instance we allow cell phones at the high school they're not to be out at the middle school yet we have a policy that says they're not to be out we need to sure that up we also need to sure up um, we certainly allow, or our, our language is very similar, to be safe, be responsible, be respectful. But I'm also hearing that in one building, um, if, if, the, if those hate comments are not specific, it's not being as addressed as harshly as in another. That's the type of things I think we need to share up in our professional development, in our expectation, what we um, allow, don't allow, and then harsher punishment to hear if a day given personally at the high school, I think a minimum should be three days. Um, and I wanna work with our staff around that. So I'm not saying everybody's gonna be a minimum of three days, I'm just saying we're gonna look harshly at the situation and all parties should be disciplined. I find that uh, sometimes we don't always catch the verbal hate speech, yet we see the physical punch I want to make sure we're disciplining the, the people making inappropriate comments as much as the person that's being physical. So those are some things I want to sure up. Um, we are working with the Ohio School Safety Center. He's going to come in and do some professional development on anti-bullying strategies, some effective programs. He's coming in on January 5th for part of our staff development. I would like to look at, I've been working with the staff for the last, uh, since the beginning of the year, you've heard me say we need more resources. Counselors are saying we need more counselors. Um, 
and we're also hearing we can't provide therapy and there's times we actually need small group instruction on how to work around anxiety, how to work around aggression, how to work around um, different issues that certainly impact learning in the school. Mostly that's done by therapists. So, um, and there's also screeners out there to say who needs that type of, of intervention would like to invest in a screener, but I want it to be research-based and certainly it would be parental choice in that. Um, we want to look at interventions and be more consistent with our group, small group interventions, as well as what we're doing with our intents. We call that tier three. That's more of your one-on-one. -on -one. What you see what that looks like when we're paying the larger bills of hospitalization and making sure that, that our programs are aligned and, and uh, effective. So those were my takeaways from Monday, but I have to tell you, my ear's been to the to the ground, and I've met with several families, issued my phone number, issued my email. I think um, there's work we, we can do in this area to be more consistent and make sure that our kids are feeling safe here in the schools, and they need to be heard, and, and we need to listen to them. So I also would like to say this. In the focus group session, we had 27 community members, the rest were professionals in the community. Um, out of the 27, Three were students actually in our schools. Three were parents actually in our schools. The rest were home schools. Now what that tells me is, I know that Patty and I have talked about, we look at numbers, how many students are being homeschooled, who's going to open enrollment, and I have seen an increase in homeschool numbers, and I wanted to create some sort of survey and follow-up. My guess is, and I know you guys get tired of hearing this, but on a national level, you will see and you read and hear that we're seeing more and more mental health needs. And that can be as simple as school anxiety. A lot of these students shared some anxiety. It broke my heart to hear the stories, but I understand a little bit more of why they're being homeschooled too. So that was eye-opening. Um, I felt like it was uh, helpful. It was painful to listen to. I will tell you my colleagues in the, in the county thought I was crazy for doing it. <laughs> But, and they even asked me last week, would I do it again? I said, absolutely. I think we need to listen and hear, and, and there's always takeaways of what we can do better. So that's an update on that. Any questions from the board? I, I have some thoughts on this. So I think all of us, all of us were there. And we heard it, and there was, I mean, there were some things that were really hard to listen to, as you alluded to. And, you know, I, I mean, bullying, I think, is a, is a problem at just about every district in the country. And I think what makes bullying different than when we were kids are these right here mm -hmm. because they can't, they can't get away from it. But one of the things that I listened to and I heard is I, I don't feel like we have a solid process for reporting bullying. And in some of the conversations that I had at that meeting, you know, it's, I told the teacher, I told the principal, I told, so I, I don't know. I'm on this board and I don't know how you would report bullying in any of our schools. So I, I don't know if there's a number. I don't know if you tell a teacher. Do you tell an SRO? I, I don't know how you report. Yes to all of that. There's so, a number, there's personnel, but I like you heard me say at the meeting, if someone's not doing their job and we're not being responsible for investigating that report, it needs to be run up the chain. We all have accountability. So the, the data, I think, when we look at bullying reports, the, the numbers are pretty low, right? So it, it sounds to me like there's a lot more bullying going on than what's being reported. And, and I don't know why that is. Or it may be reported um, in a different infraction. Like for this um, example tonight, was that recorded as a fight? Was that recorded as bullying? I don't know how it started. My guess is it was recorded as a fight. Yeah, that would be my guess. So often, sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, 
I agree with that statement. I would say that I've been on this board for. Hold on. Go ahead. I've been on this board for two years, and until recently, nobody has came to me about bullying. And I'm not saying I'm very involved in the community. I'm not saying it's not happening. I'm not saying it's not an issue. No, I, I understand. What I'm saying is, without us being aware that there's an issue, and, and that's why, you know, um, it's sad everything that's happened lately, but it's good that it's brought awareness to the situation to where we can do something and we can act. We know, we know parents that are, have kids in high school now that were bullied by the same adults that are running this, this social media site. Like, you guys don't understand. This has been going on in that group for 25 or 30 years now. Like, and it's been covered the whole time. And it's just like, you know, I, I don't know. It's been pushed aside. I would like just to say something real quick. We've contacted the police department on what you just reported over there. This is what I've been told. Some of those were, they actually feel like the parents, they're investigating this right now. They think some of the parents are perpetuating the issue, and there could be some charges that come from that. And I will tell you that it's real hard to go back and investigate a statement that was two years old. And some of this is being... Some of this. This happened right after Z died. Yeah, this was literally posted on Trends and Talk, and then it was deleted. Correct, and those people don't even walk our hallways. No, she's in VA. I'm not allowed to give information. That's. I'm just going to leave it at that. Please, yeah. Mm -hmm. That. That's probably about all the information we can give you, especially on a specific. Well, I can tell you And you heard me say, you heard me say, January 5th, we have professional, we're, we're working on this. What, I'd like to know what you would like us to do when we've contacted the police. I, I hear what you're saying, and I would like to encourage this. If you feel that it's being reported and it's not being looked after in a manner, I want you to go to, you come to me. I understand, ma'am, and my heart's broken. Could, could you tell me what, hang on one second, hang on one second. Now, this is a business meeting, and I'm going to run it, okay? Okay, well, hang on one second. And as a parent reaching out to that kid's parents... All right, we're done. We're done. You, you're going to have to go by the rules here, okay? Could you tell me what you did to report this when, when you said that nothing was done? Yes. I'm sorry, I, did, I couldn't hear you. Bullying, bullying in, the, in the sports. In the I applaud you for standing up for other children.
Well, you're. Nothing has to be done. But, but. I don't, I love, like I said, I went to Edgewood. It was great when I was in school. Bullying wasn't that bad. Like, it wasn't that bad. But for both of my kids, I mean, Yes. Very beautiful soul. Her mother has went through a lot. And I'm scared to death that this is going to happen again. Brooklyn, I'm going to email you tomorrow and invite you to a focus group with the high school kids. There's about a group of 24, and it's strictly on this topic, and it's getting to identify root causes and patterns, meaning places, teachers you think are ignoring it, administrators you think are ignoring it, we want to get to the root bottom of this, okay? Well, good, you can come and tell us. If you want to be part of the solution, I'd like to invite you to be part of the solution. You, we can talk about that. We can talk about that. There's a policies on how to do that and a process. Okay, thank you. So we've got another comment. She's. I've got. Yes. Would you? Yes, please. Yes. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming. Would you like me to repeat those things? No. Those eyes. Okay. All right. I got, I got the ending. Thank you. I wanted to give you a, a chance here to. I know you were saying something earlier. I actually got an email on that this week. Very same idea. We have Hope Squad, which are students that are trained that maybe could extend and do a little bit more. Yeah. Yes, we could talk about that. Mm -hmm. Of the peer mentoring? Okay. I don't have your name. Would you care to share your name and contact on this sheet up here, and I'll follow up with you. And Mrs. Hicks, do you care to put your phone number on there as well? <laughs> Thank you. I'll get with you tomorrow, okay? And we want you to feel safe. We want every student to feel safe. Right, right. So I think, you know, what we've talked about here, you know, going back to the, the reporting piece, and I, I do think mm -hmm. we have some opportunities there. I, I really do. And I, I think that's something that we need, to, we need to figure out. And I think it needs, you know, I would like to see this be a more direct 
process that we make sure that it gets escalated mm -hmm. to the right level where it doesn't rely on a bus driver right. or a, somebody in the cafeteria or an SRO, but somewhere where we know it's going to, it's because I, I, I even, hear people are saying that it's not getting to the right mm -hmm, level. I would mm -hmm. like to, I, I would like to take that out. Whatever the process is, is that we've got a central location where this can be reported and we know it's going to get somewhere where it's going to be followed mm -hmm. up on. Cause it, it just, there, there's, there's too many people that are saying it's, it's not getting followed up on. Which makes me wonder, is it the actual reporting or is it lack of accountability? Well, I, I mean, I yeah, absolutely. Because I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at a, uh, Policy? a couple of sites. I was, I was a high school principal until about a year ago when I, I retired. I was working here when you graduated in 2004. So um, the, there is a su safe school uh, helpline that when I was working weekly, I got um, reports from the safe school um, helpline that kids had independently emailed to them. They came directly to the school principal and were CC to the superintendent. I get them as well, and yes. I was held accountable by mm -hmm. these people in Columbus as to re uh, dealing with that issue. I mean, I, I had to deal with it and report back to them what I had to do as well as to the superintendent. So I don't know. I, I thought we were part we of that. We do have that. We have it through Ohio Public School Works, and we do get a report. Um, however, when I met with the Ohio Safety School Council, I think is the title, he was sharing, we probably need to go ahead and add the governor's Ohio tip line because he said they actually have direct counselors that can give feedback right on the phone if someone is at risk and, and thinking of suicide or whatnot. So we're going to actually add that. Matter of fact, I think it's already been added. We just need to communicate that. So mm -hmm. I had those reports at least once a week, sometimes right. more than that, and, uh, and and we dealt we dealt with it, and so. You have to, when the report comes in, you have to say what you did. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, you can come to me or Elisa Beckett, the HR director. I promise you, you will get a response from me. What do you mean by that? I understand the frustration. I have to tell you, when all this was going on on Facebook this past week, I'm like, we're going to put an end to this, called the police, and they said it's freedom of speech. And it's aggravating because it does perpetuate into the school. So then when you go to the school, you're like, okay, this is, this is, these are the rules. This is what you have to abide by. So it's almost like they know when and where, and um, it is frustrating. But I will tell you, we are looking at a few different things, and I even wondered, do we need to put like an opinion board together for a while that if you feel like you're not getting the response or you feel like it's not been investigated, 
maybe we have an SRO, a therapist, some outside people, a parent that maybe can vet some of this because um, we are looking, but it's going to take us a minute to. Mm -hmm. We also have a parent that came forward, I didn't even mention this in the letter, that wants to start an after school club um, with, fan, with students that you know might need that extra relationship building. So I think there's some good things that may come out of this. It's just gonna take us a little time to put some things together and not enough time. We're gonna, I'm asking principals today, you, you really make sure that we have harsh enough punishments out there because. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and your parents, I'm sure, did something about it at home as well. Yeah. Right. Well, I, pre I appreciate you guys coming this evening and, and sharing them, sharing all this with us. Uh, so, so it's, but I still think there's more conversation. It's, it's not. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not any way, shape, or form. We cannot control social media, and. I mean, I know kids lay at the, in bed at night waiting for their phone to go off next to them, and they'll wake up at, or get out of bed and look at their phone at 1 o'clock in the morning. Um, we don't control Trenton Talk, but I think Trenton might control Trenton Talk. I don't know. Sure, I understand. Sure. Well, let us. Uh, if you, if you don't care, Miss Spivey, we'll we'll definitely check back with you about this. Um, yes. So the administrators on Trenton Talk are not from Trenton? They are not Trenton City employees. They are local talk based in Yeah, I don't think he I don't think he meant that. I don't yeah, I, I was unaware that was ever owned by Trenton. I think he means like the community members of the community the, members are the ones who control the community the, the community members of Trenton control what is on Trenton Talk. Yes. Correct. Yeah, I think that's what yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. no. <laughs> That's okay. Yes, please. Yeah, I do not have one to see if I need um, like a request to make a contract order that the school decide to be reviewed again because I was under the impression that when no contract orders were signed, these children were not allowed to contact you through social media before or after school. So in my opinion, they should be nice. I'm not real sure what you're talking about. Um, it's at the high school at times. That's a strategy to, in lieu of suspension. You're kind of like at your last phase, and they, the, it's almost like a, a behavior contract between two students. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and what what can what did you want us to do about them contacting each other on outside social media of school. outside of school? She's not talking about a court. No, she's not. It's a she's talking about behavior a, contract. Talking about an agreement made by mm -hmm. the principal and the kids, and 
if we if we get two kids to agree not to it would be parents' responsibility to help in that situation. I mean, I mean, yeah, I think some of that's going to have to be the parents' responsibility. I mean, is the next step a court order, yes. restraining order? Then if you're having a problem with that, I think that's your next step that you need to do. I mean, yes. we cannot enforce somebody on social media at 7, 8 o'clock at night. I mean, I don't know how we could control that. Well, then, I mean, some of this has to be done by parents. We need help. We need a whole community to fix this problem. These four or five people sitting up on this stage cannot fix a bullying problem. It's impossible. But it, together, maybe we can do that. That's a good idea. Well, that's, that's and turn it into a police report if it's not being... Mm -hmm. And, you know, as an administrator, there's times we have... Um, restraining orders um, where you have to keep students away from each other. It's court appointed. I know, Mr. York. Mm -hmm. That's our responsibility to see. I mean, you know, we, we are public education, but we're supposed to be keeping them away from each other at lunch and not in the same classrooms. So th this has been some really good conversation, and there's been a lot of good things that have come up, and I do really appreciate y'all being here tonight and talking about some of this, because this, this has been very helpful. And, you know, we've been talking about the bullying, and, you know, Kelly, you've talked an awful lot lately about mental health and the mental health problems that we're having. And if we have mental health issues and we have, we have bullying or we just have mean kids in the school, that's not really doing anything to help the bullying. And one of the things that I heard Scott Fussnecker talk about when we talked about our state scores was the three E's. We, we wanted these kids to graduate from Edgewood and be employable, mm -hmm. enrollable, mm -hmm. and enlistable. Mm -hmm. And that was the goal, right? Yep. And, you know, since we had our tragedy a couple of weeks ago, I've talked with an awful lot of people. And, you know, we've heard it in here tonight that, you know, we, we do have a bullying problem. We do have a mm -hmm. discipline problem. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that I'm hearing, I'm just like, it, it, this doesn't work outside of Edgewood. You know, if, if we can have the best test scores in the, in the county or in the state, but if we don't have good citizens, none exactly. of those things matter because these kids aren't going to go out and find jobs. They're not going to get enrolled in college. They're not going to be successful in college and I'm, I'm hearing things that we have you know we're telling teachers things that you, you you shouldn't tell teachers and you didn't tell teachers when I was in school um, we've got racial slurs that are being used in our buildings we've got drugs that have been in our building and you know we talked about it in here tonight about zero tolerance and you know I'll be very honest with you I, I think that's where we need to go, and I think we need to take a very hard line on discipline. We're here to educate kids. We don't, we don't raise kids, and that should start at home. We talked about you know, what's on social media, and I've seen some really mean, nasty things said on Trenton Talk. From adults. And these are adults. Yeah. So you got to wonder where are these kids getting it from. You know, we, we talk about it starts at home. Some of the problems that we have in our school, you can follow to Trenton Talk and see exactly where it's coming from. And I think it's time that as a district and as a community, we say we've had enough of this. So, you know, my personal opinion, and, you know, Gary, Andrew, Tom, you know, I, hopefully you're with me, Michael soon to be, but I, I think we truly go with a zero tolerance approach to discipline. I think we try a three strike in your out kind of thing and if it leads to increased suspensions and it leads to expulsions then that's just part of it we can put whatever policy we want in place in here tonight we can vote on whatever we want to vote on and we've changed the policy and and that's that's fine we've got a policy but we need to change the culture and that's going to be much harder than changing the policy so i will tell you kelly that if you come back to us in january with a new approach to Discipline, accountability, bullying, I'm not going to tell you that you're being too hard on these kids. I'm not going to tell you to turn it down. We, we need to hold these kids accountable. We need to teach them citizenship because they may not see it at home. They may not get it when they leave here, but we can show them what right looks like That's right. when they're inside of here. And I'm hearing too many, when I joined this board, when I ran for this board, I wanted to make a difference in our community. 
I wanted to be a part of something that was just incredible. And I think there's a lot of really good things that are going on in Edgewood, but we've got some bad things too. That's right. And we need to fix this. And this this is our opportunity to do this. Andrew, are you I agree. Are you good with it? Yeah, I agree. I mean I think definitely there should be a zero tolerance. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need to make sure that I also think we need to do a, a good a better job of educating the kids on what exactly bullying is. And I don't know if we take a day every year or whenever and and educate the kids on exactly what bullying is and what our expectations are. You do X, Y, Z, and this is what's going to happen. Um, I think that would go a long way as well. Well, I'm, I'm anxious to meet with the student group on January 12th. This is going to be our topic. It's going to be a focus group similar to what we did the other night, but specifically with students to help us pinpoint, um, identify patterns, pinpoint locations, and and brainstorm some solutions. So hopefully there'll be more from that. And I'm actually thinking I probably need to put a committee together outside of who was at the focus group Monday. I've had a couple people email me, and I know the engagement's working on our strategic plan, but maybe there's a small group of people that we could reach out to and just say, hey, this is what our students are saying, and run some ideas back and, and bring them back to you. So I would, okay. I would like to say this is how you get problems resolved is through conversation and getting involved. Uh, it's not by screaming and yelling and, and pointing fingers. It's, it's or through, Facebook. It's through Facebook. It's through dialogue and, and you know, getting together and, and talking about things. So thank Listen, you. Listen, I, I want to. really, I commend you mm -hmm. for being under control and not throwing yep. things at us because you've done a really good job of presenting especially in an emotional time. But all of us up here, we want the same thing for, for your children, our children. And I have to tell you, it's a little embarrassing to hear some of these comments. And I don't want my name associated with it. It's going to take some time. Because like you said, changing culture is not easy. Mm -hmm. We wish everyone felt that way. We, we have some people that tell us it's not, it's not their concern. <laughs> so we wish everyone was that way. Well, we do, we do appreciate you coming. Um, so are we, we, we have a, are, are we able to do a zero tolerance progressive discipline? To, can we implement that? It makes me a little later? nervous to say zero tolerance because I think there's some things that aren't always understood. I mean, when you have special ed kids, there's certain rules you abide by that isn't fair, but it's federal law. So to say zero tolerance, I, I think what we can say is we can have an increase and, and certainly do more, but there's always some exceptions to the rule that's noted by federal law. So you talked about our values, be responsible, mm -hmm. be courteous, respectful be, and be respectful. Safe. Yes. All, so I think if, if we're doing all those things, we probably are meeting the intent of what we think discipline mm -hmm. should look like. If we're mm -hmm. not meeting those, then I think we need to, we need to punish and we need to punish appropriately. And this, this thing that I'm hearing about with the drugs that have been coming into the school, that, that needs to be a zero tolerance. I, I, don't, I don't want my daughter doing drugs. I don't want that in our schools and kids that are bringing it in here are very likely to influence other kids to try it. In my opinion, if that's what is going on, it needs to be no no three days of counseling. No, it, it needs to be expulsion, and they need, they need to leave the district. Well, again, I want to thank, thank you for coming and sharing tonight. Uh, we definitely will follow, follow back up with you both, both of you. And you'll have my email, um, so you can directly contact me with anything. Some really good stiff discipline will we'll, uh, in my opinion you know and I'm I'm one person uh, but social media isn't doing any of us any favors so uh, I think we're gonna move on now okay um, next okay I'm still in my report I only I only hit one item so I promise to go faster our strategic plan we're meeting with our uh, community engagement group again um, in January. So far, the three topics that have come up as strategies in moving forward with this district are around safety, communication, and engagement. So you'll see more information on that. Uh, this week, we'll be sending out our top five news. And I have to tell you, it's always nice as I'm circulating the buildings and seeing all the great things going on. Um, 
you know, at, out of a bad situation, we certainly had a terrible situation and a classmate that's going to be missed by many. But I have to tell you, the students have been very concerned, and our, we have staff that have taken time to really meet on the weekends, meet during the school day, outside the school day, and even take up instructional time just to make sure our kids are okay. So I, I think that's um, commendable, and I certainly appreciate our staff doing that. Edgewood Middle School students auditioned for District 13 Honor Band, and they made all the top band students for the entire Butler County, and they're going to be on the road showing off soon, so we want to do a shout out to them. And then also, bear with me, well, those are top two. Hang on, and my cursor's not leaving. So I'll tell you what, you will see the rest of these at the end of the week, but we are certainly commending our fine arts departments and all the great music programs that have been taking place. And uh, a shout out to the high school. They're working on their attendance, and they actually have shown a 2% increase in attendance since they started their initiative. So certainly thank them for doing that. Maybe we can make a goal of anti-bullying and see what <laughs> that, that increases to. And then the last thing is just something to put on your radar, and we can certainly talk about this as we move forward in, in our next few board meetings, but something that Scott Clemens brought up was the athletic participation fee. He's noticed that certainly he didn't see so much decline. He saw a slight decline with the first sport, a little more decline if someone paid or is paying for two sports. He's really worried what spring's gonna be like, um, would like us to consider a uh, a cap on sports for next year, or even may that be by family or by the third sport. So I just want to put that on your radar as maybe something we can discuss for next year, if there's even an appetite for that. And that concludes my informational items, other than Tom York. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are going to be greatly missed, but I have you on speed dial, so uh, you're not losing us that, that easily. But we want to thank you for your service to education, certainly to the Edgewood School District. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spivey. Um, next, I have items from board members. And I think I'll start this one. So I know some of you sitting here probably don't know this is Mr. York's last meeting. Uh, it's been a pillar in the Edgewood com community for many years. Uh, I think maybe eighth grade uh, was my first first time meeting Mr. York and uh, I can honestly call him a true friend. So thank you. Mr. Pressler. Proud of you guys. You know, I feel like I've got a whole bunch of kids, and uh, besides the two that I really have, uh, but uh, yeah, he's adopted. So. <laughs> had a lot of conversation in here tonight about you know the recent tragedy that we had at the high school and there, there's been a lot of negative undertones in this community over the course of the last couple of weeks and Kelly you and I were here for the winter concert on Tuesday night and you know it was really I, I personally needed that we mm -hmm. went from you know a very low place a very dark place to something that was extremely festive and, and upliving, uplifting. So, you know, I, I think we need to just remember that, you know, even though we, we've had some, we've had some tragedy and, and some heartbreak and we've got a lot of frustration in our community, there still is a lot of really good things that are happening and we've got some really great kids. We've got some really great staff, teachers, bus drivers, cafeteria workers, administrators. We've got some really great people that are coming in here every day and putting everything they've got into teaching our kids to be good citizens. So, you know, I just would ask everybody that's here, please remember that, you know, as we, we leave out of here. There's There's been a lot of negative press lately, but there's also been a lot of really good things that are, that are happening, and let's try to keep that in perspective. And then, you know, for those of y'all that didn't know, and Gary talked about before we came in here, there was a retirement celebration for Tom, and, you know, I, I sure hope I can find a 
that many people to say that many good things about me at some point in my life. There certainly is a, I, I'm sure it does, but there's a lot of great people that said a lot of good things about you. And uh, I know I personally have grown from your mentorship, your friendship, and I certainly hate to see you go. So best of luck to you, buddy. Uh, my turn. Your turn. You guys call me anytime because all I do is watch Hallmark Christmas movies. <laughs> so you, can, wow. you can interrupt me anytime you want to. Wow. I'm, I'm teasing. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm not teasing about being available. Um, but, um, you know, I've been involved with uh, what was laid on my heart uh, when I was um, 19, 20 years old. And, um, and it's been a really fulfilling um, uh, life and, and career. So uh, most of the time it didn't feel like work. Sometimes it felt like a lot of work, but, um, but no, thank you so much. And uh, I'll be around, um, uh, give me a call anytime. I'll be happy to come in and sit down and bring you a donut or something, coffee, but um, thank you so much. It's all about the relationships, and we talked about that. And, uh, I think uh, bu building relationships between students at school, and them building relationships with each other, always makes it more difficult to be mean to that person sitting next to you. And uh, if we can remember that um, and teach that to them, it's a good thing. And what you said, our goal was always to, to um, teach kids to be good citizens when they got out of here and they need to be good citizens while they're here too. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. York, and congratulations. You're not gonna do our Butler Tech for the next three years. I, <laughs> I'm, uh, we'll, we'll get to, we'll get to that. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> so now we're gonna move to executive session for some or all the following reasons. Uh, to consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or official. So moved. Mr. Messerschmidt, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Pressler. <laughs> Mrs. Bowers, would you call a roll, please? Mr. Messerschmidt? Yes. Mr. Pressler? Yes. Mr. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. York? Yes. Motion carries 4-0.